So in sciences, we typically start with classifying things. We try to classify objects uh, in different ways using different criteria. So astronomers, of course, uh, did the same thing. And uh, the first classification that was uh, done, and it kind of made sense, is, was the classification of galaxies uh, based on their appearance at visual wavelengths. And the first group are so-called uh, elliptical galaxies. So here is the photograph of one such galaxy. It looks like uh, an egg. And its catalog number is M Mercia Object 87. But what is also important um, uh, is the type of stars that form such galaxies. Okay? So, first of all, they contain no visible gas and dust as if all of the gas and dust in those uh, galaxies had been used uh, in star formation. And they also don't have hot, bright stars. They contain mostly population two stars that have a low percentage of elements heavier than helium and tend to be red because they consist by and large of lower uh, main sequence stars and they uh, at the same time because of that uh, they are quite old. Um, also sometimes they are this whole uh, category uh, and they are commonly denoted uh, with symbol E for elliptical. Uh, sometimes astronomers uh, also subdivide them uh, based on how much their shape deviates from the perfect sphere. So if I uh, schematically draw the, what we see, right, and the longer axis is A, the shorter axis is B, then the deviation from the perfect circle is characterized by a number. You take the difference between longer and uh, the shorter axis, you divide by the length of the longer axis, and so it's going to be a number less than one, and then you multiply with 10. So when A is equal to B, that is you have a, a, a perfect sphere, then we talk about E0 galaxies. And then as we progressively have uh, the cases where B becomes smaller and smaller than A, then we have E1, E2, and all the way up to E7. And as this number increases, the uh, uh, amount by which the shape deviates from the perfect sphere becomes uh, larger. So these are highly elliptical. But to me, this is a meaningless classification because Think about it. Imagine you have an egg, right? So if I view the egg along its long axis, it's going to look completely round to me. So what, you, what we see right, depends on how the axis of the elliptical galaxy is oriented relative to us. So something that to us might look as E0 to some other observer in the universe might look as E7, right? So this is, there is not much substance in here, 
Nevertheless, I'm telling you so that if you see this nomenclature, E0, E1, E2, E3, E7, that you know what it means. Okay, the second uh, group are spiral galaxies. And they are denoted with letter S, just like ellipticals were uh, denoted with letter E. Uh, these ones are denoted with uh, letter S. And they are divided into several groups depending on the size of the nucleus of the bulge and the amount of gas and dust and also uh, the abundance of uh, very hot, young, luminous stars. Okay, so here is the photograph of one such galaxy. And uh, as this particular one uh, illustrates, these S0 or lenticular galaxies are characterized by very large nucleus and hardly visible spiral arms. Right? You can not see in this particular one uh, really uh, uh, the spiral arms uh, at all, but it has a disk. This is edge-on view, right? Uh, so it clearly has a disk. Uh, and uh, extremely large nucleus. Uh, the second group are SA spiral galaxies. Okay, and here is a photograph of one such galaxy that belongs to this category. It's so called sombrero galaxy and I have actually this picture in my office they have a larger nuclei and uh, less gas and dust and uh, also uh, 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 fewer very hot uh, luminous stars compared to other two groups SB and SC so, as you can see, they have sub substantial uh, amount of, uh, they have substantial nuclear bulge to SB and SC. Okay, and the next I'll discuss the other extreme, uh, SC, and SB is kind of in between SA and SC. Okay, I don't have enough space here, so I'll go to the next page. Okay, so this is an example of SC uh, type of galaxy. In, in fact, I think this is the one I've shown to you before, uh, M100. Um, so compared to lenticular galaxies and SA galaxies, they have smaller nuclei. They have a lot of gas and dust that is uh, concentrated in the spiral arms of the galaxy and also uh, a fair number of these hot young luminous stars. And because these stars uh, tend to be bluish in color because of their high surface temperature, such galaxies have a bluish appearance. Actually, I can use the space here. So they have, um, have small nuclei, lots of gas and dust concentrated in spiral arms. and many hot, uh, luminous young stars. Which again, because these stars don't live very long, they are born in the spiral arms when 
a cloud of gas and dust uh, sort of catches up with the spiral arm. As we've discussed, it gets compressed, triggers the star formation. We will have uh, stars of uh, various masses formed, but those that have very large mass, hence very large luminosity, and hence don't live very long, they will just uh, spend their entire life, maybe a few hundred million years, uh, in the spiral arms. Okay, and because of a, a large number of such stars, as you can see on this particular photograph, when you look at them through a telescope, uh, they uh, appear to be bluish. Okay, and as I pointed out before, uh, SB class is in between SA and uh, SC, right? Uh, they have nuclei uh, larger than uh, the galaxies in SC group, but not as large as those in SA group, and they don't contain as much gas and dust as the galaxies in SC group, but more than those in SA group, right? So, and the number of these hot uh, luminous stars is kind of in between the two extremes. Now, um, about two-thirds of all spiral galaxies are so-called barred spirals. And the designation for them is S, capital S, capital B. S for spiral and B for barred. And again, they, we have three subdivisions. SBA, SBB, and SBC uh, uh, according to the same criteria that were used for ordinary spiral galaxies. Okay, so let me show you a photo of one such barred spiral. By the way, our Milky Way belongs to the group of uh, barred spiral galaxies. Okay, so here is uh, the photograph obtained using Hubble Space Telescope of um, such a uh, galaxy. Uh, it seems as if uh, there is a bar coming out of the nucleus of the galaxy. And then uh, the spiral arms are attached uh, to that bar. So schematically, uh, uh, their shape is something like this. So uh, we have the nucleus, and then we have this linear feature coming out from the nucleus, and then there are spiral arms attached to those bars. Okay, so here is nucleus. There's this bar and spiral arm. All right, that's um, uh, the shape of <coughs> uh, these barred, sp barred spiral galaxies. And uh, Milky Way actually uh, belongs to SBC group. And the uh, last group, so we had ellipticals, we have uh, spirals with some finer division within that particular category. And the last um, group are so-called irregular galaxies. Uh, here is uh, a one. Uh, and it has a name. Uh, this is irregular galaxy one Zwicky eighteen. Named after Fritz Zwicky, uh, uh, ast astronomer, astrophysicist who was among other things 
the, actually the first one to propose the concept of a dark matter. And as you can see, uh, they are just a chaotic mix of gas and dust with no obvious uh, 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 nucleus or spiral arms. Uh, let me show you um, uh, the two uh, neighboring galaxies that belong to the same uh, galaxy cluster uh, as the Milky Way, so-called local group. They are large and small Magellanic clouds. Uh, they are observable in the southern hemisphere, that we cannot see them in the northern hemisphere. So here is um, a large Magellanic cloud, and it is at some 170,000 light years away from us. So the light produced uh, by its stars takes 170,000 years to reach us here on uh, Earth. And here is the small Magellanic cloud. By the way, uh, that uh, best studied supernova, uh, 1987A, uh, was observed in the large Magellanic cloud. And here we have a small Magellanic cloud at the bottom of this figure which is a galaxy cluster to which our Milky Way belongs. We'll talk later more about the galaxy clusters. Those of you who took astronomy 1P01 might recall that when we did at the beginning a quick inventory of the universe, uh, we talked about the fact that galaxies uh, uh, often occur in clusters. And this particular one, maybe a few dozen galaxies to which Milky Way belongs is called the local group. Um, elliptical galaxies, uh, they account for about one third of all galaxies that uh, we observe. The spiral galaxies, they make up the majority of the brighter galaxies that we see. And the regular galaxies, they are, tend to be sm much smaller in size. And because of that, uh, because they contain less stars, they are not as bright as spirals or ellipticals. Okay? So because they are less bright, they are much harder for us to see. But in fact, irregular galaxies might be the most numerous galaxies in the universe, right? It's just we can't see them because uh, of their low luminosity. They are hard to see at the greater distances. However, the fact that we can see them doesn't mean that they are not there. It's just they are hard uh, uh, to observe. Uh, from Earth because of their um, small size and therefore low luminosity. Uh, uh, but they may, in fact, uh, be the most common type. 